what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so today uh, we're going to be working on this 2019 razor xp turbo uh, right now it's uh, overheating um, when we're going through the trails or if we're really getting on it and it's hot outside right now too so it's not helping any but uh, basically the issue is the auxiliary the auxiliary radiator and the main radiator all the fins are, are pretty much bent in the front so it's not getting adequate airflow uh, we've got two new ones on the way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you guys how we're going to uh, pull the machine apart and then we're just going to replace both radiators so let's get into it all right guys so first thing we got to do we got to pop this hood off so i have these little push pin releases um to get the hood off it just pops off like this put that off to the side and then what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to start pulling a lot of the front fascia off. So we're going to have to pull off the uh, the front front bumper here. Um, and then also, I believe, uh, this plastic piece as well. We're just going to undo these. I don't think this has to come out, but we'll find out here in a second. All right, so these are a T40 Torx to get these off. So we're just going to zip these out. I'm trying to record and do this at the same time, so bear with me. All right, so next we're gonna pop these out. These are a T27. There's actually some under here too, so we're gonna pop those out. Those are the same uh, T40 Torx on both sides. All right, so next we're gonna pull this shroud off. Same thing, T40 on top. And then there ended up being two more uh, T40 Torx that were over here. Uh, they're kind of a pain to get to. Uh, that's where the bolt goes through and it threads in there. Uh, just because the angle it's on it's kind of a pain but now we have the uh the front clip pulled forward just kind of hanging there just need to get it out of the way a little bit so i can uh you know get in there and get rid of the radiator support so i can start getting ready to slide these out the top all right guys what i ended up doing is uh after i got those last two t40s out what i did was i just disconnected the headlights uh and the fang lights and uh, just moved the whole front clip out of the way just to give me some more space um, and then now what I'll probably have to do is uh, take this off so I can get these plastic pieces out of the way sideways. And then, um, you know, we can go from there and start draining the system and getting ready, getting these ready to come out. All right, guys, so I'm going to start taking these uh, dash pieces out. This is a T27. There's one over here and there's one on the other side as well. And then we'll go ahead and uh, pull the, the center console out. It'll just be those two um, push pins right there we got to pop out. All right, so I have the Super ATV flip-up windshield, so uh, i got to go ahead and remove this lower windshield as well to uh, make some room for the dash to come out. All right, guys, so we got the dash all out. Everything is uh, removed as far as that. I took these off just in case I had to. Um, just the same thing, T40 on the sides. i got two more T40s here I'm going to remove. Uh, I'm not going to take these white pieces completely off just because if you look, they're wrapped around the cage. I'm not looking to take the cage off to, uh, to remove this. I just need to give myself some room so that I can move these out to the side so that I can slide these, uh, these radiators up and out. So it looks like I should be able to move them aside now to be able to uh, clear the radiator. So let's move on. All right, guys, so I got this piece off as well. This is just a couple of uh, little push pins. There's one right there. And there, there's one right there too. A little push pin right there that goes in. Pull this little plastic piece off. You got two 10 millimeter bolts here and there to pull this support out of the way. This looks like the rectifier, so we're just gonna, gonna let that sit there, just move it. And uh, next thing, we gotta take those 10 millimeters out right there and right there. So let's get those zipped out. All right, so we got that one out. This one's a little tricky. The coolant tank is right in the way, so I had to put a wobble extension on there. Get it out like that all right guys so we got the uh, little brackets out that were here they literally just pull out uh, once you get the bolts undone and then i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take off these two little lines uh connecting to the overflow for the radiator one goes there one goes to the auxiliary and then these things should pretty much slide right out they're real loose right now so let's go ahead and take those off all right guys so i went ahead and took this one off and no real coolant came out but this one is like under pressure, so um, I just put it back on. What we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna I'm gonna release the uh, the lower coolant hose here off this radiator and start draining some coolant into my bucket um, just to release that pressure. Uh, this way, when we pull them out, there won't be any coolant left in them or minimal coolant, so we don't make a mess. So I got all the uh, hoses pulled off. Most of the coolant is drained out as of now. Made a little bit of a mess, but it's kind of to be expected with something like this. I was able to catch a good amount of the coolant. Uh, it looked a little dirty, so. I might just end up just replacing the coolant. It's not really expensive for a couple jugs of coolant. So, um, 
Next would just be to uh, slide these out. And actually, just as I got done, the uh, DHL guy got here and dropped off our two brand new radiators. So as soon as we pop these out, we can slide the new ones in, fill them up, bleed the system, and we should be good to go. All right, so we got the main radiator out. There's a few uh, little connectors that are still attached to the uh, main radiator. You have to disconnect, be careful. And then there's this uh, vent line for the front diff that's supposed to be connected to this uh, vent here that, that just came apart. So I got to fix that. but. Um, got the first uh, radiator out and we are ready to swap the fan over. Uh, you got to unplug the fan obviously as well. Get that out of there. And then it just looks like four 10 millimeter bolts. Swap it over onto there and then we'll pull the uh, auxiliary radiator out. All right guys, so we got the uh, fan put on the new radiator. We got the auxiliator, auxiliary radiator ready to go in. We got both radiators out. So now we can slide them back in, get everything buttoned back up. Both radiators in here, not quite level yet. Um, got to put the brackets back on, but we got all the uh, hoses connected. All of them are back in. So now we can start uh, putting the brackets and the pieces back together. Put it back together and uh, start bleeding the system the, out. Uh, reservoir full, uh, as full as it'll go as of right now. Um, I have the front end jacked up. So that's going to do it. That's going to take any air pockets. It's going to want to push them more towards the front. Um, you know, towards the radiator and towards towards the uh, uh, reservoir, the tank. So that's where the air will come out of. And then uh, we're just going to run the machine, keep an eye on the temperature. Uh, we'll have to let it circulate a little bit. And then um, there's also a bleeder uh, screw that we have to open on the engine. I'll show you guys where that's at. But we'll have to let we'll have to let the machine cool down before we do that. Um, but let's go ahead and start it up. All right. So you want to wait till about 180. That's when the thermostat opens, and that'll let the cur the coolant circulate. Uh, and you can see now the temperature is going back down because the thermostat open. You want to let it circulate like that a couple times um, to make sure we have enough coolant coming from the uh, radiator to the motor and vice versa. Um, so it'll cycle like that a few times. It'll go up to 180, then come back down. Um, and the entire time, you just want to massage the hoses, uh, make sure they're getting warm. This one's finally starting to get warm. Just get some coolant movement as best as you can. Just keep filling the hoses. Keep working that coolant around, making sure any air bubbles are coming out. Got to keep an eye on your uh, reservoir. It's still full, which is good. You got some hoses back here. That you can massage. Keep that coolant flowing. These are getting nice and hot, so that's good. We got good coolant circulation at the motor. let it run for a little bit we'll see if it'll get hot enough to uh, kick the fan on and then uh, if it's hot enough to kick the fan on and we don't have any leaks and everything looks good then we'll shut it down and then uh, we'll have to uh, make sure we don't have any more air pockets which we probably will but um, we'll just bleed it at the motor and I'll show you guys uh, how that how that works once we get done here all right guys, so the machine is still pretty warm, but what I'm gonna show you is where the bleeder bolt is on the motor. Um, it's in the same spot on the turbos and the 1000s, but with the turbo in the way, uh, you have to go from the top where the engine compartment is here. You can't go through the little peephole in between the seats. Um, so I'm just gonna try to flip the camera over here, put some light there, this way you can see the bolt. Um, I'll flip it over here. It's really gonna be kind of hard to see, but that's it right there so it's an eight millimeter bolt and basically all you do is just break that loose um, just a couple turns and then what you do is you just wait until you get a steady stream of coolant out of that bolt then tighten it back up and then run the machine you basically just keep doing that uh, and topping off your coolant until you get a steady uh, steady stream of coolant and um, that'll pretty much eliminate any type of air pockets that could be in the motor still this way you don't have any type of uh, overheating uh, issues all right, guys, so we got the machine pretty much back together. I uh, put the front the front fascia piece back on. I still have to uh, do some diagnostic work on my uh, my glove box subwoofer, but other than that, uh, the system is bled. Um, the coolant's topped off. We got all the air pockets out. Uh, two fresh radiators in the machine, so it should run nice and cool now, um, and she should be good to go. So uh, I'm gonna start making more content on this machine. I just got it. Uh, if you like the content, please you know like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.